Mental health is a big problem in today's world and it still hasn't been getting enough attention. In honor of Mental Health Month being in May, we decided to educate other people on this subject. The United States is one of the countries that has the most mental health issues, like Colombia, the Netherlands, and Ukraine. In the United States alone, 40 million adults suffer with mental health conditions, with more than half of them suffering silently. It affects the emotional, psychological, and social well-being of a person. This issue is beginning to affect the future of aspects including education, work, and public safety. Unlike a lot of people say, mental health disorders are curable as long as you get the right help from the right people. Many of us now acknowledge that, like any organ, the brain can become ill through no fault of its owner. Engagement and attempting to recover early in the process are crucial to improving the outcomes and increasing the promise of recovery, and that is what we hope to bring to your attention today. Today we will focus on the top five most common mental health issues among the United States population. Depression. This disorder is when people feel generally really sad, have no motivation to go out and have fun with family and friends, and have a feeling of no self-worth. Depression affects around 300 million people worldwide, which is almost 5.5% of the population. Just in the United States, 16.2 million adults suffer with depression. Depression also causes exhaustion and, unfortunately, can lead to suicidal thoughts. Schizophrenia. This is a type of psychosis. Psychosis are very severe mental issues when an individual has sensory experiences of things that do not exist or believe. Bipolar affective disorder. This disease is when people have two extremes. In one moment, someone can be having a manic episode, which is usually characterized by very high self-esteem, desire not to sleep, and a lot of energy. And in the next moment, they could be having a depressive episode, which is exactly what it sounds like. Only in the USA, there are 5.7 million people with this disorder, and most of these people aren't getting the right help that they need. Anxiety. Usually when you hear this word, you associate it with depression, which is not entirely wrong. It's very common for someone that has depression to develop anxiety soon after. Anxiety affects around 40 million adults just in the United States, and it is highly treatable. Although it is a curable disease, only around 35% of people that suffer from anxiety get the right help and medication. Anxiety leads people to excessive nervousness, fear, and worry. Dementia, memory loss, personality changes, and impaired reasoning. More than half of all mental health conditions begin at the age of 14, and 75% of these mental health conditions are developed by age 24. So we decided to ask some students that attended our school. Hi, I'm Kelly. Hi, I'm Evan. Hello, my name is Kibe. My name is Manny. Hi, I'm Riley. Hi, I'm Alex. Hi, my name is Sophia. Hi, I'm Max. Hi, I'm Will. I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm Nikki. Hi, I'm Mrs. Bodine. Uh, hi, I'm John, and I'm here to be interviewed, apparently. How would you say your mental health affects your everyday life? So during the school week, I usually feel really stressed out because just being in the school environment um, creates a lot of stress for me. Um, it affects my sleep and it stresses me out a lot. Uh, like school and stuff, like it's just stressful sometimes. We get like so much homework and just like racks on racks on racks of homework. Well, mental health obviously affects how motivated I am to do homework, to do track and other physical activities. Also eating and many other things like that, but mostly mental health is definitely about motivation. There is a lot of tests, upcoming tests that we have to study for and I become very anxious trying to remember all the tests that we have to do and I barely get enough sleep the previous night because I'm studying so much for the test the next day. Uh, school makes me stressed. Well, in school everyone's very judgmental and there's a lot of stereotypes that make everyone, including me, feel insecure about themselves. It's not good. Um, my mental health affects my everyday life because it affects um, how I do in school and how much sleep I get. Um, when I have a lot of homework and tests and quizzes to study for, then I'm not really ready for the day and um, it affects my stress levels. 
um, which affects my grades overall. Uh, well, school definitely affects my mental health because school and track obviously make me uh, stressed out a bit. So um, I try to do other things to combat my stress from school and stuff like that to make my everyday life a bit better. Mental health affects my everyday life uh, due to the stress and anxiety that I feel sometimes in doing my job. I do my best to manage it, but sometimes it is overwhelming and try to use techniques to reset and to just get myself back in focus. Do you think these disadvantages will affect your future performance or well-being? Yeah, I think in the future this built-up stress will create a lot of anxiety and it will not be good for my mental state. Well, um, well the lack of sleep uh, affects my grades and that can affect the college you get into and the job I have in the future. Um, and how do you think the school could all work together to fix this situation? No homework. If school gave us less homework and more time to like, explore the world and see what else you want to do in life. Well, as it's obvious, Rich High School is very heavy on its students. It causes a lot of mental stress and a way to lighten that up would I'll probably be able to give um, easier times during homework or give less homework in general. Maybe assign more directions for projects and such because sometimes we just have no idea what we're doing and we have to move with that and ultimately put less weight on us throughout. So yeah. The school can educate uh, more students about about stress and how to handle it and the teachers can provide uh, help when students need it such as like extra help, more extra help so that the student isn't as stressed during the exam. Well, they could be more accepting of everyone and just be nicer people overall. I think the school should have more policies on like how many tests you can have like on a certain day and they should like coordinate that better. And I think there's some activities they can do like in the school to implement them in order to reduce the stress levels of kids. Um, probably give less homework and give more time students to do things they enjoy so they can be happier on a daily basis. I think the school could help kids that are going through mental health issues by offering more support services to them, uh, by perhaps extending deadlines to give them more time to complete assignments, but what I really think the school could do, and I'm sure that a lot of students wouldn't be interested in hearing, I think that they could do better at having them select schedules that are more appropriate uh, based on the type of stress that they might feel. Students who take more AP courses are going to feel more stress. And so perhaps the school should do something about limiting the amount of AP courses and honors courses that students should take. Do you think a lot of the mental health issues kids have are a result of their school? Yes. We now know that more than 106 million Americans live in places where mental health care isn't an option. That's roughly 30 to 35 percent of our country's population. But now, primary care clinics across the country are beginning to induce mental health care into their set regimens. This includes processes to treat things such as depression, providing screenings, care, medication, assessments, and other resources for patient and other families.